Welcome to Avalon Church. We're so glad that you joined us today. And today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to take communion together. I realize we're all separate at home, but we can be together online and thank God for technology. I'm going to be talking to you today about the healing power of communion. I really do believe that when you take communion in faith, that it has great power in your life. And we're going to talk about that today. So what is communion? Well, communion really is... Um, an extension of Passover, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But Jesus, uh, when he died on the cross, um, formed a new covenant. And so the bread represents the body of Jesus, and the wine represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, with the bread, we use unleavened bread or simply bread without yeast. And um, the reason for that, yeast represented sin in the Bible. And of course, Jesus was without sin. There's a couple different kinds of bread you can use. I have here some flat bread. Most flat breads don't have yeast in them. And this is a uh, sprouted grain bread called Ezekiel bread. Uh, but if you want a more affordable way to do this, you just get some uh, flour tortillas. Most flour tortillas don't have any yeast in them at all. And you can use that uh, to represent the body of Jesus Christ. Then, of course, we have the wine. In the Bible, uh, they used Passover wine. Most of the time it was a red wine. It was definitely an alcoholic wine. And you may wonder why at Avalon Church that we use grape juice. And the reason for that, there's nothing holier about using grape juice. It's just an act of consideration because there are some people that don't drink alcohol and some that maybe have an addiction problem, and we want them to be able to participate in communion as well. And of course, the blood of Christ is represented in the wine, and that is what washes our sins away. So I want to encourage you that we take communion. I normally use wine. I don't use grape juice when I'm at home. And uh, whatever you choose to use, uh, that's fine as well. And speaking of wine, you probably have heard about the four immutable laws of religion. And here they are. Um, Jewish people do not recognize Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Catholic people do not recognize Protestant as uh, the legitimate church. Protestants do not recognize the Pope as the vicar of Christ. And Southern Baptists do not recognize each other in the liquor store. All right, so um, I don't know how you feel about that, but uh, those are the four immutable laws of religion. Well, let me pick up reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And the Apostle Paul recorded for us this about receiving communion and how we're to take it and the power that it has. So read along with me. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment upon himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. Well, I want to talk to you about how communion and taking communion in faith empowers you as a believer. The first thing is this. It gives you power through remembrance through remembrance. That's the first thing we want to talk about. He said, do this in remembrance of me. There is something powerful whenever we take the, the, the wine or the juice that represents the blood of Jesus Christ and the bread, which represents the body of Christ. It is one of the most powerful aspects of communion because it causes us to focus on Jesus and to focus on the gospel. It takes our attention off of our worries off of our sin, off of our past, off of our failures, 
off of our concerns, off of all that's going on around us, and it helps us to remember what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Let me just give you a couple things that we can remember when we take communion. Uh, we remember that Christ fulfilled all the requirements of the law for us. That shows us the grace of God. The truth is, we don't earn salvation. It is a free gift. And God's grace is given, and it is unearned, unmerited, and undeserved. And it's God's kindness and favor to us. So we don't do anything to earn it. And what this does is it reminds us that Jesus did everything. And that, of course, gives us peace because we're not trying to earn our way to heaven. Another thing communion does is it reminds us of how he saves us. It is a symbol. There is nothing magical about taking bread and wine, okay? But rather, it is the faith behind it. It is symbolic of what Jesus Christ did for us. And then communion keeps the gospel at the center of our lives. And I love that because the gospel is what Jesus Christ did for us to make us right with God. The gospel says done, and every other religion in the world says do. In other words, you got to do more. You got to try harder. You got to be better. But what God tells us through the gospel of Jesus Christ is that we don't have the power to be good enough. We fall short, but Jesus did everything necessary to heal that relationship with God, to make us spiritually alive, and to renew our relationship with Him. Another thing that remembering does is it fills my heart with gratitude. The more I think about and remember what Jesus did on the cross, the, the more my heart is filled with gratitude. And the more I think of the things that I'm thankful for, it just dissolves the worries, the cares. It takes my focus off of those things that are temporary, that are temporal, and puts my focus on the important things, the things that are uh, eternal. And, and I think particularly during a time where we're sheltering in place, when there is news every day that's changing, when we don't really know what's going to happen with the economy, when some of us are thinking, man, there's an overreaction, and others are thinking, man, we're not doing enough, and there's all this turmoil. It is wonderful to be able to think about the good things that God has done for us. And when you remember what He does and who He is, you become thankful. And the more I'm thankful, man, it just relieves the burdens of my heart. And so uh, when I take communion, it really is very helpful to me emotionally and spiritually and mentally because it puts my attention back on Jesus. And then communion reminds me of the new covenant. In the verses we just read, Jesus says that this is the new covenant in my blood. Now, what does that mean, the new covenant? Well, it simply means that God has ushered in his grace. Whereas before Jesus, there was a lot of rules keeping, a lot of law keeping. But God in his wonderful grace gives us his grace freely. And that is the new covenant that Jesus has done everything that's necessary. And all we must do is receive it by faith. So the first thing that taking communion in faith does is it helps me to remember. Remembrance, it's very, very important. Here's the second thing it does. It brings revival. You say, what do you mean by revival? Well, when I was growing up, we would have revivals in church and it would go from Sunday to Friday or Sunday to Sunday. And sometimes there would even be a tent and uh, sawdust on the ground. And we had the old fashioned revival and a preacher would come in and we'd have services every night during the week. Well, that's not what we're talking about. Revival is simply something that renews us. Listen to what he said. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, until he comes back again. So when I partake of communion, not only does it help me remember, but it revives me because it gives me spiritual renewal. And here's what I believe with all my heart. Every one of us, is going to face a time, maybe you're in a time right now, where you need spiritual renewal. There are times in my life that I feel like maybe I'm not quite as close to the Lord as I am at other times. Uh, I heard one person describe it this way, that he was in the winter time 
in his spiritual walk with the Lord. And do you know that every season is necessary? We have obviously love spring when things are growing and summer when there's harvest. And of course, the fall, it's a beautiful time of year. But not as many people like the winter time, but the winter is necessary. And here's what I know. When you're going through those times that God is testing your faith, when you feel like maybe I'm not, I don't feel at least as close to the Lord, when you take communion, it will revive you. It will help you feel closer to the Lord again. It will remind you of what Jesus did. And then in that revival, when you take communion by faith, it is something that encourages you because it is a symbol of what Jesus Christ did for us. Now, I want you to understand that communion is not a replacement for my faith in Christ. Just because I take communion does not make me right with God. That happens when I place my faith in the good news of Jesus Christ, and I trust in His grace, and I trust that Jesus died on the cross and resurrected from the grave and offers salvation to me, not that I earn, but as a free gift. But the beautiful thing that happens is when I take communion, it enhances my faith. It draws me closer to the Lord. It means that I'm declaring by faith that Jesus has done everything necessary for my salvation and that I'm trusting in his finished work, not in my goodness, not in what I think I deserve, but the finished work of Jesus, not my own deeds. And what this shows me is that communion does not save me, but by taking communion, I am publicly giving testimony that I have received the good news of the gospel and that I love Jesus. So there are two things that are very important about communion that will help heal me emotionally, that will help me through difficult times like what we're dealing with now, that when I feel lonely or discouraged or down or despondent, that I can turn to Him. It will help me remember and be thankful, and it will revive me spiritually. And here's the third thing that happens, is restoration. God will help me restore things in my life that maybe have been lost. Listen to what he said. I want to read this again that we just read. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Remember that phrase, an unworthy manner. So let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body. That's another important word. Eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you were weak and ill and some have died. What Paul was writing about was there a group of people that had begun to abuse communion. And there were a couple ways that they abused it. One was that they, um, were, had, they had their own agenda. They were being selfish in how they did this. And what was happening was um, the, the very diverse church was getting together. And those that were wealthy, they were kind of shunning the people that were not wealthy. And they didn't even want to hang around with them at the same table. And then there were some that would show up and they'd drink all the communion wine and they would get drunk. And there were divisions in the church. And communion, of course, is not about dividing the body, but about bringing the body together. And um, so the word unworthy means to be careless. And because of the careless way that they were treating the, the representation of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, uh, some of them had missed out on the power of communion, and some of them even to the point of death, because they were careless about the promises that Jesus gave. Now, obviously, no person is worthy of the grace of God. That's why it's called grace. And so what uh, was, he was talking about was obviously not that if you came and took communion and you forgot to confess some sin that happened 14 years ago, that God was going to judge you. That was not what it meant. But because there were people that in those two ways, they were careless in how they associated with others. It was a pride thing. It was an agenda thing. It was something to be seen of others. And then the others simply did not take it in faith. And so uh, the point is that faith is required when I take communion. God wants me to take it in faith. And I'm going to talk about what that faith does uh, because communion has its roots in Passover. Now, if you recall, Passover was when uh, the nation of Israel had been enslaved and in bondage in Egypt for some 400 years, 
and um, God sent Moses and he delivered them. And on the night before he delivered them, you remember that the plagues had been coming on Egypt because of the hardness of their heart, because Pharaoh would not let the Israelites go. And the last of the 10 plagues was the death of the firstborn. Now, in order for their firstborn child, their firstborn of all their animals, not to die, what God required of them was the sacrifice of an innocent lamb, and they would place the blood on the top of the door and on the doorpost. I like it because it forms a sign of a cross, which represents what Jesus did for us on the cross. So let's... Um, Read this in Exodus 12, 13. It says, But the blood on your doorpost will serve as a sign, marking the houses where you're staying. And when I see the blood, I love that phrase, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Well, there's so much symbolism in that. When God sees the blood of Jesus Christ that we have received by faith, he passes over us and he saves us and he puts us in right standing with God. But there were some other things that happened at Passover that you and I need to be reminded of because there's great power in it. What did God do for the Israelites through Passover? Well, he saves. And I want to challenge you today, if you've never been saved, that you would receive Christ as your savior. He loves you and he has given you the free gift of salvation if you'll just receive it by faith. But another thing that God did was he delivered. Did you know that God has the power to deliver you just like he delivered the Israelites? Well, he delivered them from slavery. But what he does for you and me is he will deliver us from that which binds us, that which holds us in bondage. And I would say this, when you take communion by faith, and of course, faith is the key. When you come before God and say, Jesus, I believe you have the power to deliver me. And I believe that Jesus can deliver you from whatever it is that binds you. Maybe it's a sin. Maybe it's something you keep on doing. And when you take communion and you do it in faith and you do it again and again, then by faith, God will deliver you from that sin. Maybe it's from your past. Maybe there's someone that hurt you and you just can't let it go. I would challenge you to take communion every day. And in faith, ask God to deliver you from that pain, to deliver you from that hurt so that you can release forgiveness to others. Maybe it's an addiction of some kind that has you in bondage. And when you take communion by faith, you say, God, I believe that Jesus will deliver me by faith. Maybe it's just simply a habit that you really are struggling with that you want to quit, but you can't in your own power. Here's what I know. God has the power to deliver. And so when you come before him and by faith take communion, he'll deliver you in faith. You just keep doing it. Keep trusting him. The third thing that God did for the Israelites was he provided for them. If you've read the story, you know that when the Israelites left Egypt, the Bible says that the Egyptians gave them all their silver and gold. And it says that the Israelites spoiled the Egyptians. That just simply was the kind of word it talks about, the spoils of war. In other words, they, they took all their wealth and God provided for them the wealth that they needed. Here's what I know. Jesus is our provider. And I want to challenge you that during this time, particularly because some of you are struggling financially and some of you have lost a job already. Some of you, you've been laid off or furloughed and you don't have the income coming in that you did have and some of you are really struggling. And some of you are afraid that if this continues much longer, that you're going to lose everything you own. Here's what I know. The U.S. government does not provide for me. My job doesn't even provide for me. But God Almighty is the one that provides for me. Jesus is my provider. Here's what I would challenge you to do. If you're worried about provision, if you're worried about finances, I would challenge you every day, take communion. Come before the Lord. You take the bread, which represents the body of Christ, and the wine or the juice, which represents the blood of Jesus Christ. And by faith, you say, God, I'm trusting you as my provider. And then the last thing that he did was he healed the Israelites as they came out. The Bible tells us that they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years 
and God didn't put any of the diseases of the Egyptians on them, and that uh, apart from the time they disobeyed God, where some of them were judged by God, they didn't have any illness and any sickness at all. That's amazing. Here's what I know. Jesus heals. And so my challenge to you today is this. During the time of this COVID-19 virus, take communion every day for healing. If you are struggling with a physical disease or a physical ailment of some kind, take communion. Why? Is there anything magical about bread and wine? No. But there is something powerful about our faith when we turn to Jesus Christ, the one who died for our sins. And I believe this with all my heart. When you come before God in faith, he saves, he delivers, he provides, and he heals. And he will do that for you. And then here's the last thing I want you to see is reflection. He Paul wrote, he said, let a person examine himself. The implication for believers today is very simple. We need to examine our heart. And I would say we need to examine it on a regular basis. Is my faith in Christ what it should be? Or am I allowing my fears and my doubts to dominate my life? The more I trust God by faith, the more thankful I'm going to be. And the more obvious it's going to be in my life that God is the one that I'm depending on. I would encourage you to examine yourself, to reflect. Um, if your motive has not been right, or if you've not been taking communion in faith, then ask God to forgive you and ask him for the faith that is necessary for you to trust him. And I really do believe that God will provide for you. Now, before we do communion together, I want to give you an opportunity those of you watching that have never received Christ or you're not sure about the gospel or you're not sure about your salvation. The whole point of communion is to represent what Jesus Christ did for us to save us. The Bible tells us that all sin, every person is born with that sin nature and our sin separates us from God. No matter how good you are compared to God or compared to Jesus, you're not perfect. You fall far, far short, and so do I. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came into this world. He lived as a human being, 100% God, 100% man, and he died on a cross for our sin and represented the human race and God himself. So he took our punishment. He absorbed the wrath of God so that God is just because he punished sin through Jesus, but he also is loving, and he gives us a way to receive this free gift of salvation. And because of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you and I can trust him today. And I want to challenge you to do that. If you've never trusted him before, or if you're not sure about your salvation experience, I'm going to pray, and I want you to pray with me, and I want you to click the button about uh, receiving Christ. I see that hand. Um, I want to pray with you, and pray something like this. Dear Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God and that you died on the cross. And I believe you rose from the grave. And I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins, to put me in right standing with God, to save me and deliver me. And I'm trusting you today for my salvation. And I want to thank you by faith for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, did you pray that prayer? Is that something you want to pray? Make sure you click to let us know that you prayed to receive Christ today. We're so excited for you, and I want to encourage you to take your next step. Your next step might be to fill out the next step card and sign up for baptism or sign up for our next step class, which is offered online as well. And so I want to thank you for joining us today, and I want to thank you for everyone that um, prayed to receive Christ today. Well, at this time... I want us to take communion together. Um, the Bible tells us that the bread represents the body of Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us that Jesus, when he was with his disciples, he broke the bread and he gave it to them. And it says that they took it and, he ate, and they ate it and it represents the body of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that by taking communion today in the body of Christ, what we're saying is, God, I thank you for saving me. God, I believe you can deliver me from whatever my fears are, from whatever my addictions are, from whatever my sin is. 
God, I believe you are the one who provides for me, and I am trusting you during this time to provide for me. And Lord, I believe you can heal. And I ask you to heal my body from whatever disease or illness I may have, and I'm asking you right now to heal me. And the Bible says that Jesus prayed and blessed the bread, and they took it and they ate. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the source of our salvation, that Jesus is the way. And God, we receive this right now, thanking you for the body of Jesus, which was given for us. And the Bible says that they took the bread and they ate it. Well, I hope you reflect on what Jesus did for us when you're taking communion. And then the next step is that Jesus said he gave them the cup and they drank it. And he said, this represents my blood, which is the new covenant. And we want to thank God for the blood of Jesus, that he shed his blood to forgive us of our sins. And the Bible says that Jesus blessed it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blood that was shed for us. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us and you made a way of salvation for us. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And the Bible says they took it and they drank it. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. And I hope you'll take communion. In fact, I hope you'll take it every day until God delivers and God heals. We want to pray for our nation. We want to pray for our world. We want to pray that God defeats this COVID-19 virus and that people are able to get back to work soon and back to health soon. And uh, I believe that he will. Well, take your next step. Like I said, maybe your next step is filling out the next step card. Just click it there online and fill it out for us. If you're new to Avalon or you want more information, um, or you want to sign up for the next step class, or you want to sign up for baptism when we're able to come back together again, then you go ahead and fill that out for us. Um, also, maybe your next step would be this week to encourage your family or to reach out to someone in your small group or someone in your neighborhood or someone that you know and have a relationship with. It could be an encouragement to them, and that way you can minister uh, to them. Maybe your next step is to give in the offering today. We offer a couple of ways for you to give even while uh, things are uh, in limbo in our world. Uh, you can give online by clicking there at avalonchurch.net forward slash give. You can um, text to give 84321. Text the number 84321 and you can give any amount. Of course, you can mail it in. There's some of you that prefer to do that, and we do check the mail each week, and so uh, we'll deposit that for you, and uh, we want to thank you for your faithfulness to give. Now, next week, I'm going to do something special. Uh, we're going to do something that I believe will be an encouragement to you. I'm going to talk about three things that you can do during a time that things are upset, things are uh, uncertain. What do you do in a time of uncertainty? And Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount told us three things that we could do to make that application of how we live. I do not want you to miss it next week. We're going to give you three action steps that I think will be very helpful and very encouraging to you. I want you to know that I love you and I thank you for joining us today and God bless you for being a part of Avalon Church. Hope you have a great week and we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us at Avalon Church. Share this message with a friend and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. You can also join us every Sunday live on the Avalon Church Facebook page. If you feel led to give and support our mission of bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do so by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.